This collection of astronomical instruments is located in China at the Beijing Ancient Observatory. Chinese scholars were among the first to monitor and document the motions of objects in the celestial sphere. This observatory played a key role in that endeavor. The site has an interesting history. During the 17th century, Emperor Qing Kangxi invited European Jesuit astronomers to assist in the design of some new instruments, an important collaboration. Knowledge about the cosmos was being shared among the great civilizations. A new understanding of the universe was taking shape. One of the interesting instruments that evolved from this endeavor was a new type of precision sundial, the armillary sundial. It is based on a simple version of the ancient armillary sphere. An armillary sphere consists of concentric rings representing objects in space and their path on the celestial sphere. The earliest armillary spheres put the Earth at the center of the device. Later versions put the Sun at the center, the heliocentric model of the solar system. This is an armillary sundial. Viewed from the side, it looks like this. This ring represents the equatorial plane. The Earth is at the center. This ring sits directly above the Earth's equator. The second intersecting ring represents a meridian line. It sits above a line of longitude, intersecting the equatorial ring at 90 degrees. The axis for this device is the Earth's axis of rotation, this axle. The device becomes a sundial when we monitor the shadow cast by the axle onto the equatorial ring. The shadow, of course, is created when the sun shines. The axle becomes the dial's gnomon. As the Earth rotates, the shadow moves across the equatorial ring. Numbers equally spaced on this ring indicate the time. The sundial must be oriented correctly. That is accomplished by aligning the axes of the device with the Earth's axes. This means the axis of the sundial, its gnomon, is pointed at Polaris, the North Star. Here's how to build an armillary sundial. We will need two concentric hoops. These are called embroidery hoops, used in needlework. These inexpensive hoops are available from craft or fabric stores and are ideal for this project. Any size will work. I'm using 10 inch or 25 centimeter diameter hoops. Next we need to mark four locations, 90 degrees apart on each hoop. There are a number of ways to do this. Here's one. Wrap a piece of masking tape around the hoop, butting the ends. Then remove the tape, tack it to a tabletop and measure its length. Divide by four and then use this number to locate marks on the tape. My piece of tape measured 80 centimeters, so the marks are spaced 20 centimeters apart. Reattaching the tape to the hoop, I transferred the four marks to the hoop. Do this with both hoops. Note one mark aligns with the gap in the larger hoop. Next, drill three small holes at the marks on the larger hoop and four small holes at the marks on the smaller hoop. We need a mount for our armillary sundial. I used a block of wood with a metal bracket. The tightener on the large hoop attaches nicely to this metal bracket and allows us to adjust the angle of the axes. Center the small hoop inside the large one and join the hoops with small bolts, screws, or even some paper clips pushed through the holes. We need a scale for our sundial. Lay out a piece of masking tape with a length equal to half the circumference of the smaller hoop. Divide this length by 12. My tape is 40 centimeters long. 40 divided by 12 gives us 3.3 centimeters. Starting at one end, I will make dots spaced 3.3 centimeters apart. You will end up with 12 dots if you've gone to the very end of the tape. Now for the hour numbers. At the very left hand end of the tape is 6 or 6 a.m. This is not over the first dot but actually at the end of the tape. 
The next dot is 7 a.m. and so on. Looks like this. Note that 6 p.m. is actually the end of the tape. Attach the tape to the inside hoop like this. I have removed the small hoop to make this task easier. Note that the opposite holes align with each number 6. The center hole aligns with 12. Reattach the hoops, making sure the hoops are at right angles, 90 degrees. If you don't have a square, a careful alignment with your eyes will suffice. Use some glue to lock the two hoops in place. We need a gnomon, the axes of this device that casts the shadow. I used a straw cut to fit inside the large hoop. The straw sits here. A screw and wire bracket hold it in place. The armillary sundial is finished. Now to align it. The angle between the ground and the axes must be your latitude. My latitude is 45 degrees north. Next the device must be pointed true north. You can do that with a compass or in the northern hemisphere on a clear night you can point the axes of your dial at Polaris, the north star. The morning sun is shining on our kitchen table. The sundial is aligned to true north with a compass, telling us the current time is 8 a.m. You can also rotate your sundial until it displays current clock time. There are a few issues with doing it this way, including standard time versus daylight saving time. Once the dial is set, you will see the shadow moving from hour to hour. Here are some things you should know about a sundial. They are designed to display standard time, so they are best set to always display standard time, not daylight saving time. Clock time and sundial time often are out of sync, a phenomenon represented by the equation of time. View our video on the equation of time for information on how to compensate for that. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you will be aligning with true south and the scale numbers will be inverted. The armillary sundial makes an excellent science fair project or a functional garden ornament. The moving shadow of the gnomon demonstrates the dynamic and complex geometry of the solar system. You may have public sundials in your community. They are worth visiting. These devices have a rich history. They have played an important role in the evolution of our understanding of the universe. You'll find more information about sundials and other science topics at our website. HyloRoad.com. Follow the videos link.